Hi, my name is Leo Girard, and I'm the International President of the United Steelworkers Union. And I want to say a proud member of Local 6500 in Sudbury, and a person who spent a lot of time on the staff of our union working in Elliott Lake. And I first want to thank all of those that worked to put this important event together to commemorate one of the most important things in Canadian labour history. I want to thank all of those that worked to do it and I want to apologize for not being there. Unfortunately I can't be there as I have to be in Washington to uh, do some testifying on some important legislation that affects our current membership. I want to remind people that what turned out to be a very important struggle for occupational health and safety in Elliott Lake also turned out to be a very important struggle for occupational health and safety and workers' rights, not just all over Ontario, not just all over Canada, but in fact all over North America. What was accomplished when our membership went out in Elliott Lake over occupational health and safety and ex trying to explain not only the accidents, but the long-term health effects of radiation exposure and the number of cancers that we had to deal with, we led to that fight into the Ham Commission. And the Ham Commission actually looked at, was studied, it was uh, then commissioned, I should say, to look at the health and safety of workers in mines. But through the work of then District Director Lynn Williams and the rest of our union, we were able to expand that investigation so that it looked at workers all over Ontario. And Dr. Ham came forward with a set of what was at that time reforms that were unheard of in the past. And those reforms became the baseline for occupational health and safety. Our union took those reforms to every bargaining table, whether it was in a mine, whether it was a steel plant or a large fabricator, and in those days our large manufacturers. And we also took to the legislative arena to make sure that those recommendations would find their place in law. We challenged the then Occupational Life Safety Act that basically didn't exist. We had the Mining Act. And for those from Elliott Lake, you'll remember that we got bounced from pillar to post where they said, well, we didn't fall under the Mining Act, we didn't fall under Ontario legislation because it was radiation and we fell under the old Atomic Energy Control Board. And at the Atomic Energy Control Board, they tell us, well, you didn't fit there because you were mines. And we managed through persistence and through struggles to make sure that we were included in the Mining Act, but to also make sure that we had an opportunity to challenge radiation exposure levels and other forms of occupational health and safety, dust and silica, whether it was under the Mining Act or whether it was the Atomic Energy Control Board. And so I want to congratulate, as I said, those that planned this event. I want to make sure that we talk about never forgetting. And we're now at another point where we're having reviews. We had a review of the Mining Act. We had a review when we have cave-ins and collapses in mines, and in both in uh, Elliott Lake and at Inco and at Falconbridge. And those, those mine collapses led to another study on occupational health and safety in mines. That was more than 30 years ago. We're now in a current study, or so-called mining review. And unless things have changed between the day that I'm making this report to you and the day that you see the report, as of then, we've had two additional serious accidents, one member killed, one member in terrible condition, and we had those mining review hearings. Those, those review hearings were, to the best of my knowledge, as of today, no one from the industry has testified in Sudbury. That is the height of arrogance, and we need to make sure that they get either to testify and give their view so that it can be uh, challenged if need be, accepted if it should be. But to simply ignore the review is just not acceptable. We need to make sure that what we did in Elliott Lake 40 years ago is never forgotten. We're now traveling the country on a program called Stop the Killing. It was our union that, on the heels of all the things we've accomplished following the Ham Commission and the work in Elliott Lake, that we then went to the Westray Bill. It took us 10 years to get the Westray Bill through the federal government. And in the period of time since we've gotten the Westray Bill through the federal system, we've had negligible enforcement, if any, of the Westray Bill. So our union has taken it upon itself once again to travel the country with a program that says stop the killing. 
And what we want is we want good occupational health and safety conditions. We want to make sure that when our members go to work, they'll come home not only safe, but come home healthy, come home with their lungs and fingers and legs intact, come back with their brains intact, come back with their back intact, and come back in a healthy way and come back so that they can do the work that they want to do. But when a tragedy occurs, we want it investigated properly. We're not interested in just putting people in jail. We're interested in occupational health and safety standards that are second to none. But when those are neglected, when there's been what we would certainly consider as criminal neglect as has happened in many cases, we don't expect that a company should get off just paying a fine that they can then lay off to their insurance company and then write down as a tax expenditure. What we need to do is make sure that we take our case to every town, to every municipality, to every police force and demand that when there's a tragic accident that leads in a serious incident or in, God forbid, a fatality, that those are investigated on occupational health and safety standards, but are also investigated with the full comprehension of what the Westray Bill was meant to do. The Westray Bill was meant to make sure that people who were negligent and criminally negligent would face the highest part of the most difficult part of the law. And that would be that they'd be held criminally responsible. That hasn't happened. And as many, many cases, all of you know, it should have happened. So let me again just close by saying I apologize for not being able to be with you. But I'm also very proud of what we accomplished. Uh, is it enough? No, it's not enough. But it's our union that has moved the occupational health and safety agenda across Ontario, across Canada, across North America, and also across the world. Let me close with, on April 28th, in Canada, in the United States, and in many parts of the world, we'll be commemorating under different names, some places called Workers Memorial Day, and some places, places called Workers Day of Mourning, where we mourn for the dead and fight like hell for the living. Let's not forget that once again, the impetus to have a national day where we reflect on occupational health and safety started in Elliott Lake and Sudbury. The first city in North America to recognize April 28th as a day of recognition was, well, I said, whether it's called Workers Memorial Day or National Day of Mourning. The first city to do that was Sudbury. And the first government to do that was initiated by the New Democratic Party. Our struggle have never been easy. Our struggles continue. But be proud that we struggle for the right things and we struggle in the right direction so that when our members go to work, they'll come home safe and healthy. Keep in mind solidarity forever. Thank you for doing this commemorative event and never give up, never give in. Solidarity forever.